Okay. Thanks for coming all. So today uh, we're going to do a little bit of a light topic, uh, and we're going to look at uh, we're going to make a start um, looking at self assembly, and we're going to make the easy start by looking at self assembly uh, for molecules, and we're going to make it even easier. We're just going to look at some base parameters that determine whether stuff does this, and then we're going to look at a, a few uh, type of different self assembled structures that you may or may not have heard of. So uh, I think this slide we've seen before. So an amphiphilic molecule, uh, the word amphiphile stands for basically that it has two opposing characteristics. So one, one part of the molecule or one section of, or multiple sections of the molecules are lyophilic, which means uh, solvent loving. And the other side uh, would be lyophobic, which would be uh, solvent hating in this case. And, uh, and therefore, two words that you might be more familiar with are hydrophilic and hydrophobic. And that just stands for systems uh, that are dispersed in water. So um, if, you would have a, if you would have a molecule that is hydrophobic, it could actually be lyophilic if your continuous medium would be in oil. So it depends on your dispersion medium how you're going to define these things. So, so hydrophilic is, is directly coupled uh, to the solvent uh, you're looking at, in that case, water. So the question, basically, uh, that arises is, if you have an amphiphilic molecule of which one or more segments do not like the solvent, what happens if I up the dose? As in, what happens if I increase the concentration of these molecules. So you could even more generically think of what happens if I up the dose of particles, yeah? So it's, it's just a generic thing that you could uh, think about. So, so if you look at, um, well, if we restrict ourselves to molecules that you, know, you, you might be familiar with, so we have this sodium dodecyl sulfate, which we've seen as a surfactant in uh, emulsion polymerization actually is, is one of the most common surfactants in, in, in consumer products. So if you, if you look on your toothpaste, it'll have a lot of SDS in it. Actually, in India, it has more SDS in it than in Europe. The reason being, it has to taste a little bit like soap. Otherwise, people perceive it that it doesn't clean. So, um, but anyway, so if you look at that molecule, you'll see a polar hat. So you'll see the sulfate group, SO4 minus and a sodium counter ion that obviously in water can move, can move away if it wants to. And then, uh, and then you have this, um, well, long alkyl chain in this case, which obviously is, is, is hydrophobic. There's some other structures. So you see here uh, on the right-hand side, you see some of those more like phospholipid type of uh, um, forming molecules. Uh, so in this case, the top one, you have a phosphate group. In the bottom one, you've got a quaternary ammonium salt. So this is Zwitter ionic. Um, well, not as Zwitter ionic in this case, um, but you've got a quaternary ammonium group there. So these things are, are found quite a lot in natural cell membranes. Uh, the bottom one is the Zwitter ionic one. So you have, a, you have a cationic charge and an anionic charge in the same molecule. And then um, the one on the bottom uh, left, is a hydroxypropyl cellulose. So if you take cellulose by itself, you'll have a lot of OH groups that obviously uh, are hydrated in water. And you can modify these OH groups uh, with, with small molecules in order to make it more hydrophobic. So if you replace a bunch of them with, for example, uh, hydroxypropyl, you'll basically introduce more aliphatic units. So you can also have hydroxyethyl, and there's a variety, or you can uh, turn it into an acetate group. There's a variety of ways how you can make an OH group, uh, how you can modify it to make it a little bit more hydrophobic. And as a result of that, these things get a more pronounced amphiphilic character. So the, the question really is, if I start with one molecule in water, where can it go? So it, it can be just, you know, happily diffusing around in the water. Or potentially, it could go to an interface. And if you would have a beaker glass, it could go to the air-water interface. That yeah, could go all the way up. And it would be more happy there, because 
potentially the hydrophobic tail could tug itself in the air uh, away from the water uh, and that would effectively then locally lower the surface tension right because it'll act like a mediator alternatively it could go to the side of your glass jar and it could could absorb there so any interface in principle could be a substrate for adhesion or absorption however you want to call it of molecules or particles it depends on the uh, affinity for this surface whether this will actually happen or not yeah so so if 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 i would increase the dose more then obviously a number of these molecules will be will be dissolved in water as unimers and a number of these molecules will go to these interfaces so you'll go to the air water interface or you go to the the interface of the side of your beaker and at a certain point you've saturated those interfaces and if you then still increase the dose the only thing that can happen is that you know you oversaturate the continuous phase the water phase to an extent that is not very good for your molecule because obviously the hydrophobic parts would not like to be in contact with water and as a result of that they tend to aggregate so the point at which this happens is often referred to as the critical micelle concentration or the critical aggregation concentration i would like to prefer to call it the critical aggregation concentration because a micelle in people's minds quite often is a spherical uh, supra structure whereas it doesn't have to be a sphere what is a fact is that the system in a way phase separates the hydrophobic parts cluster together uh, and you'll get a you know a, a, an aggregate formed that is dispersed in the continuous phase so this is typically the picture what you have um, so you have above this concentration you have these aggregates that that just like you know uh, form and they continuously exchange with unimers that are in the water phase yeah so if you have a small molecular weight surfactant of which the saturation solubility is quite high and the molecule is quite small you can imagine that the dynamics of this process are quite large so you can imagine that this thing kind of exchanges on a quite rapid time scale however if you make a large molecule large molecules move slower so the dynamics are slower but potentially even worse you can make a molecule so large that the hydrophobic part so large that it actually does not dissolve in water very well so you go to 10 minus 9 10 minus whatever molar and then you can imagine that you potentially can freeze the hydrophobic structure the, the, the aggregate and you don't have exchange yeah so there's a bit of a dynamic process involved uh, here so in, in principle you need to think there's like well two extremes one extreme is that your suprastructure in this case a micelle is very dynamic so there's exchange of each building block in a way and the other extreme would be that if you form that structure it's kinetically frozen and there's no exchange and it depends obviously amongst other things on the molecular characteristics so this is a very nice tool to um, figure out if you have a certain molecule or if you have a certain particle on what type of structure to expect so and uh, and it basically links just the geometry of um, the suprastructure so for example if i would form a spherical micelle that would be a sphere if i would form a worm like type of structure it'll be modeled as a cylinder and you know like a vesicle type of system or just like a flat sheet would be a would be a bilayer a lamellar bilayer sheet so it's just like a sheet like structure so geometry of that um, is quite an interesting concept and as a result of that people have to find a parameter to predict before the experiment what the 
equilibrium or the thermodynamic kind of most favored geometric most favored structure would be. Yeah, so if, if you have enough flexibility in your system so all your components can move, that's what it's going to make. So, so here is the definition of this packing parameter, P. So P is defined as a certain volume divided by a characteristic area times a characteristic length. And that value um, the, is correlated directly to the shape that you would like to make. So now in the previous example, we had three types of shapes. We had a sphere, we had a cylinder, and we had a sheet. So what I want you to do now is think about this a little bit and figure out for yourself what P would be. What is the value for a sphere? What's the value for a cylinder? And what's the value for a bilayer? Have a, have a go at that. 